For Clamidia in Johannesburg, I'm Sane Lamini. Hereka Bonman is in conversation with Polity about her book titled Mission of Malice, My Exodus from Gwasizabandu. Erica, this book is about your life at the Gwasizabandu Mission in Guazulu Natal. For those who don't know, uh, can you briefly tell us about what the mission is and about how your family became involved with it? Certainly. So Kwasi Zabantu Mission was established about five decades ago. It supposedly does a lot of good. They've got a teacher's college there, um, they have a school, and they also um, are the people who make aquele water. Um, they started as a small mission station and they've now grown into a multi-million brand kind of like business organization more. But my parents got involved when I was around um, eight years old. My mother went to listen to someone preach and then we started going there. Can you briefly then tell us about the life at the mission and about how the mission has been using religion uh, to punish people? How does that uh, mix? Yes, so they preach um, that God is love, but then mm. they actually teach you to fear him. So fear and love are very um, closely intertwined there. When I was a child there, they used to beat us um, mercilessly. Um, I was a white child, so I had it much easier than the black children who were often beaten until they bled and in public. And apparently that has stopped, which is good. Um, they don't beat children in public anymore, but they teach fear. Everything is about fear. You fear God. They also believe that you have to confess your sins to a human being who then intercedes with God to forgive you. And if you die with one unconfessed sin, you are going straight to hell, no matter how good your life has been. And you also write that things started changing when your parents left for France to learn French to do missionary work in West Africa. You and your siblings were left at the mission, I believe. How did then the relationship between you and your brother and your sister change at the time? Because you wrote in the book that you found comfort in reading books at the library. Can you tell us about that difficult period in your life, Erica? Yes, so I was 10 years old. Um, my brother was 12 mm -hmm. and I was 14 when um, my parents left us in the care of Kwasi Zabantu and they went to France to learn French. My father was a missionary. We were all born in Malawi, so he very much wanted to go into Francophone Africa. That was tough because I was 10 years old and the other girls in the dormitory were all in high school already. Um, so that was difficult. And I started wetting my bed um, often and at Kwasi Zabantu, boys and girls aren't allowed to um, really have much to do with one another except in formal situations such as school or in the church services. And so my brother and I probably didn't say more than like five words to each other a week, you know. My sister was older and, you know, I was a little bit of an embarrassment because I was wetting my bed and she's not my mother, you know. She was young and also abandoned there. So I learned that I can only depend on myself, you know, and, and um, that I was alone. At the mission, they also believe that kids as young as three years old, they should be punished. Then you were told to teach these young ones English. You were also now forced to punish them. And you say in the book that that still haunts you. Can you tell us about that? Yes. So they actually start um, hitting well, when I was there, the even babies mm. would get tidings. The the three years old comes in, Elo Stegen would preach, you have to break the spirit of a child by the age of three. So by the age of three, that child's spirit has to be broken. Otherwise, they're not a perfect vessel for God, you know. Mm. And when I finished matric, I wasn't allowed to go to university. My mother wouldn't sign any papers. And at the time, you, you needed your parents' signature. So I was given 45 little five-year-olds. 44 of them were Zulu and one was Afrikaans. And I was told that in this year to teach them English so that they could start their schooling in English, which was a very good idea. But I would keep them quiet 
without hitting them. And then I was called in and told that I am actually preventing them from going to heaven if I don't hit them. Because by hitting them, I was teaching them the way of God and, and keeping them on the right path. And so, so I had to give them hidings. I don't have many regrets in my life, but that is probably my single biggest regret in my life. Yes. You also explain as well that uh, the mission believes that women are sinners who lead men into temptation. You were not even allowed, as you have just told us, to speak to boys. What was done now to those who were caught speaking to men? Well, that depends on where on the hierarchy you were and um, what color your skin was. So um, I would have received a very bad hiding and possibly been expelled from school. My black friends, um, my one friend, Telempilo, she was 15 years old when a colleague of her father approached her and chatted to her and gave her a chocolate. Then she was called and said, you're having a relationship with this man. You accepted a chocolate from him. And she said, no, I'm not in a relationship with him. And she, so she defied them and said, and refused to acknowledge her sin. And she was beaten severely and kicked out and she left. She had to walk out of there at the age of 15 with only the clothes that she had on. No money, no nothing. She depended on the kindness of strangers to get to a family member's house. Beatings and expulsion. And that's for accepting a chocolate from a man. If you were caught um, writing a note to a boy, you were both beaten um, and then expelled. Can we stick with Kalimbilo's uh, story? Because I know you're still friends at the moment. What, how did she survive living uh, the mission like that at that age? The kindness of strangers and then making her way to some family members. And then she finished her schooling and today she has a very successful career and she's built an amazing life for herself. She's incredibly resilient and just unbelievably beautiful. <laughs> a beautiful human being. She's like my sister. Yeah. The element now of racism. This was in the 1980s, and now the mission had allowed people of all races to pray together uh, at the time. But in the book, you also reveal how black people were eating different food from, from white people. And you also tell of, of eating that uh, it was difficult. It was not the same if you were white. It was uh, like better than uh, when they were beating black people. Can you unpack some of the things that were done uh, in the name of the God? Yes. So I was kind of vaguely aware of it when I was there as a child. Um, often um, mm -hmm. us white children would be told to leave a meeting and the black children would stay behind. So I knew that mm -hmm. they got a lot more beatings than, than I did. But mm -hmm. I didn't know until last year the extent of that. This is Domino Civite School that was established mm -hmm. in 1986. And mm. in the early years of that school, the black children would all be called together and they would have mm -hmm. sermons where, they, where the children would denounce one another for sinning, mm -hmm. a little bit like wow. you hear happens in North Korea still today. And then those children would be beaten mm -hmm. in public. But the, to add extra humiliation is they would be stripped to their underwear. Wow. And when I heard about this last year, I spoke to my one friend in the book I call her Tandi. And I said, Tandi, mm. how is it possible? And I said that older girls were in their bra and panties. And she said, no, only the panties. You mm. even had to take off your bra. Wow. And this is in front wow. of the whole school, including boys, which is just so bizarre wow. and humiliating mm. and just unbelievably terrible but yes they did start this multiracial society which on the face of it was absolutely groundbreaking in south africa but mm -hmm. then in 50 years there has never been an interracial marriage so even though the races are wow. supposedly living among one another how is it possible mm. that in 50 mm. years out of yeah. hundreds of marriages, there has not once mm. been an interracial marriage. That actually tells you everything, doesn't it? If I were to ask you now, Erica, to say something, I know that the church is still operating, which is also like uh, 
unbelievable to me that how this church is still like operating in our country but i know that there are people who are overseas who've read the book who are also like saying yes these things happened and they are happy that they moved out of the church they are no longer in association with this church what would you say to the to the leaders of this church well they need to do what they taught us and that Mm. is repent and confess Mm. your sins and make restitution Mm. They, they need to acknowledge, but they won't. They need to acknowledge that their particular brand of theology is toxic and destroys mm. people's lives. And they need to make restitution. And in the book, you also share that uh, biology books were censored at the mission because uh, you were not allowed as, as learners to learn about human reproduction. Why was that done? So apparently one of the reasons the school was established in 1986 was because the government was bringing sex education into the schools and oh. they, the parents and the people at the mission didn't want their children to um, have sex education. So mm. I was 19 years old before I went to a gynecologist um, and mm. suddenly understood you know, something about my body a little bit more. Mm. Um, there's oh. no sex education. There's no even real education about what happens. My, when my mother caught me washing blood um, from my underwear, she mm. prayed with me, gave me a pack of pads and said, this is blood and it's going to happen every month and you have to really stay away from boys now. And that was the extent of education that I had about what was happening to me. And that leaves you extremely vulnerable to abuse mm. Mm. Okay. because you, you really know nothing. The first time you get sex education is the day of your marriage and you're marrying somebody that you've never been alone in a room with. He, he went to the leaders and said, he feels God wants you to marry her, marry mm-hmm. me. And then they come to me. I have to go pray about it. I say, yes. Um, and then you get married in front of the church. And the first time you are alone together is the night of your marriage. And now, Erica, tell us about how you managed to leave the mission. At Pasis Abanti, there was no TV, there was no radio, no magazines. So I, is, I, I got away at the age of 21. And I was this young girl with who had never heard a queen song even, you know, or... Um, oh. I, I had never worn a pair of jeans. I um, had had no jewelry whatsoever. And mm-hmm. so I, got, I managed to get a job as a receptionist. And, but of course, the only clothing I had was the type of clothing that I wore back at Kwasi Sabantu, which is um, a, a skirt or a dress below my knees, always mm-hmm. with uh, sleeves and not, not too revealing, you know, very sedate, mm-hmm. very, yeah. very um, modest. And he mm. would tease me terribly. And so one day he actually um, said to me, hop in the car. And he took me to Truett's and um, mm. made me try on some jeans. And, I, I, and then he said, no, when we found a pair that he approved of, he said, no, you're wearing that out of this place. You're not putting your skirt back on. And um, then when I walked out, I was so scared because I was sure that a lightning strike was going to strike me and God was going to strike me dead for sinning, for wearing a pair of jeans, because that's what we were taught, you know, how God would strike people down with lightning or, uh, you know, take his mercy would run out and then you would, he would kill you. So I, I wore jeans for the first few times with great trepidation. You had an on and off uh, relationship with your mother, but then she cut you out of her life. That must have been hard. Yes. So... Kwasi Zabantu have um, spawned many fractured families. Um, Mm -hmm. There are so many of us all around the world who have lost Mm -hmm. contact with a member of our family or more than one member of our families because Mm -hmm. you're not allowed to have contact with those people who choose to turn their back on God. So, for mm. example, people who've never been part of Kwasi Zabantu, you're still allowed to contact them and speak to them because they've never seen the light. But mm. I saw the light and turned my back on it. And as such, wow. I, I, I had to be cut out. So my mother um, 
told me that we would meet at the cross or not at all. So she means in, wow. in that I must repent and then, then we can have a relationship again. And my sister mm -hmm. and her husband forbade me to have anything to do with my three nieces who were very little at the time. They now in mm -hmm. their 20s. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so yes, it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard, but with time and therapy, um, you know, mm. you come to terms with it. Why do you think that is the case, that uh, the church is still operating despite being um, at the commission and what was shared at the commission? The commission haven't yet published their findings. I don't know how far they are in their mm -hmm. investigation or um, whether mm. they're going to still be listening to other people. I know they've I think they stretched quite thin um, and, and that they've mm. got, they've, they're handling a lot of cases of various different things. Mm. So um, okay. I, I don't know if that's the reason why they haven't yet um, done anything. I think um, Kwasi Zabantu is very wealthy. I wouldn't be surprised if there are people in government who protect them, um, but I, I don't know that for mm. sure. But um, it's very hard. So what happens as a survivor is you get away because you think something is wrong. But mm -hmm. for a while, I believed that they were right and I was wrong. I was evil. And then wow. I came to terms with the fact that no, what I and other people experienced there was abuse. But it took me mm -hmm. many years to reach that point. And then you also feel quite ashamed well me less so because I was a child but I imagine if you're an adult and you were sucked into this place and you leave you feel ashamed you feel powerless they haven't been taken to court as far as I know by anyone you know it's very difficult to make a case against mm -hmm. a religious institution unless you can prove sexual abuse and how difficult is that to prove you know mm -hmm. so um I I genuinely mm -hmm. don't know um South Africa as a whole can help by not supporting mm -hmm. them, by not buying the products that they, that they sell. Mm -hmm. Every South African can actually help um, the survivors to achieve a measure of justice um, because I think they'll only, they'll only take note if they're no longer making any money. Then maybe they'll listen. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't know what it's going to take. Would you mind sharing us some of the products that the church is producing? Yes, so it's aquele water, which is the big one. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then they make Bonle yogurt or Bonle yogurt, but that's, I think, only mm -hmm. in KwaZulu Natal. They um, mm -hmm. export avocados to Europe through Halls and oh. Sons in Nalspreit. They mm -hmm. sell um, fresh produce like red peppers and that to Woolworths. Mm -hmm. They do kiwi fruit and that, and Radio Kwezi is their radio station. The last question uh, from me, Erica, is how are you doing now? I'm doing so well, Sane. Thank you. Mm. I um, mm. Writing my book was really hard. I cried for about five months straight every day. Um, mm. Now that I've written it and it's out there, I feel such a sense of relief. Um, I just turned 50 in August. And the day before mm. I turned 50, I watched the sunrise. Mm. And for the mm. first time in my life, I can say that I like myself. It's taken me 50 wow. years, but I really like myself. And, and so I, I mean, I'm, I think I'm going to be, keep healing as time goes on, but I'm light and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm happy. There was Erica in conversation with Polity about her book titled Mission of Malice. My exodus from Gwasi Zabandun.